एवरीवन वेलकम और वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल फॉर दोज हु आर न्यू टू दिस चैनल हाय दिस इज डॉक्टर मधु मिश्रा आई एम अ थ्योरिटिकल फिजिसिस्ट एंड करेंटली आई एम अ पोस्ट डॉक एट एशिया पैसिफिक सेंटर फॉर थ्योरिटिकल फिजिक्स इन पोहांग साउथ कोरिया एंड इन टूडेज वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट वॉट आर थ्योरिटिकल फिजिसिस्ट डू एज अ थ्योरिटिकल फिजिसिस्ट माई सेल्फ दिस इज माई जर्नी एंड माई एक्सपीरियंस फ्रॉम बींग अ पी एच डी टू बींग अ पोस्ट डॉक नाउ so what i have understood is as a researcher theoretical physicist does one of two things either they have a data which requires some explanation so they develop a theory or a model second either they have a theory that needs improvement such that the improved theory leads to some predictions which is then experimentally tested so in physics cosmology would belong to first kind of research where we have data from cmb which needs explanation so we are proposing various inflation model string theory on the other hand will belong to second kind of research which is improvement of general relativity and is trying to combine quantum mechanics and gr and it is predicting various particles high energy particles that needs to be experimentally tested and also beyond standard models they are theories that are improvement of previously existing theory and they need to be experimentally tested so these are some examples that theoretical physicist do there are various other sub categories of theoretical physics like condensed matter statistical physics biophysics high energy uh, biophysics high energy phenomenology or nuclear physics but i will not talk about all other things which because i am not an expert on these things so currently i am basically working on supergravity and as well as on cosmology so i can talk about these two, two kinds of work that a theoretical physicist do now the largest part of my research has been about reading books and research papers so basically familiarizing myself with the research that has already been done and this takes mostly 80 or 90% of my research time so just getting to know what kind of research has been done and what kind of research that people are currently doing to get to know more about this we read research papers regularly or checking daily archives every day what kind of research has been put out attending conferences taking workshop attending schools to learn new techniques that have been developed by talking to researchers in our field uh, experts from our field that is what a conference does help in when you attend a conference you get to meet to so many new people and talk to them about what kind of research they are doing and if you want to learn something that you have read maybe you have read their paper and you want to understand some particular things so when you go to some conferences you get to talk to these people these experts in their field and get to learn from their first hand now when you familiarize yourself with the research that is going on currently you get to know about lot of techniques and it's possible that you will come across a open problem and one of the problem you can pick for your own research now the problem that you pick should be interesting and should be doable something that you can do with the skills that you have learned now picking a problem that is feasible uh, with the skill set that you have learned and that takes your field forward is not a easy task for which you need a very vast literature knowledge and that is why when you start as a phd you don't have enough knowledge and that is why you need a supervisor who have who has read so many papers and who has better idea so that he can give you a problem that you can solve uh, and he will also tell you the particular skills that you need to learn to solve this problem however when you grow after 4 or 5 years of your phd you have after 5 years of phd you have learned enough you have read enough papers and now you are familiar with 
lot of new ideas and uh, new techniques so as a postdoc now you are capable enough you should be capable enough to find a new research problem and do it on your own or with people or you can collaborate with people who you you think is uh, capable to help you so as a phd i completely relied on my supervisor to give me a research problem or he he gave me a topic that i should read about he told me that i should search for references on my own he doesn't want to give me the references that he has because then there is no way i am going to learn how to find a reference for myself and it was initially it felt very hard uh, for me uh, i felt helpless but later on maybe within 6 month i realized that it was the best thing he could do for me to leave me to find research find papers find techniques find methods on my own and try to find the result and i knew that if i am not able to do it and if i go for help he will help me out and he has helped me out so many times and that is why in every video of mine i have mentioned the importance of a helpful supervisor that is what bindu sar was for me he was so helpful and in every video i mention this that is why so um uh, yeah so that is what a supervisor does so as a post of now that i have read enough papers and i have attended enough conferences and workshop to know that these are the topics that people are familiar with and knowing things that i know throughout my phd and other than what i have done during my phd i have also taught some new techniques for myself that i haven't used yet yet so right now i am exploring things in cosmology so my phd was all about supergravity and black hole physics now using some of the backgrounds from supergravity i am exploring some inflation model in cosmology and i am very proud of this uh, project that i am currently pursuing and i will talk about it once it is out like when 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 it is complete and when it is out there it's not yet complete we are still uh, working on it but i am very proud of it uh, i am very proud of this project so i am going to talk about this project once it is out so yeah that is what a theoretical physicist do we read a lot of papers then we try to find a problem that we can do and in the side we also try to teach ourselves some techniques either by uh at watching youtube videos or by going to conferences and talking to our seniors like teaching ourselves mathematica uh, some people try to learn new new coding languages i have only taught myself mathematica and some of the packages that uh, you use to i usually teach myself the things that i need currently for my research so right now i am for example using exact package in mathematica to solve einstein equations and uh, such sort uh, for cosmology and i am also using mathematica for my black hole project so i taught myself mathematica which i haven't used throughout my phd i was doing all of the calculation by hand so you should be equipped with both you should be able to do things by hand and also through some numerics uh, use some packages use some coding if you are if you can i think uh, in today's time and days that you need to have some computing of. knowledge or programming knowledge it really helps and it, it also, also saves a lot of time and uh, you get better results uh, you understand things better when you do it on mathematica so mathematica is something that i uh, rely on uh, due these days uh, although all throughout my phd i wasn't using mathematica but uh, throughout my phd uh, post doc i have been using mathematica mathematica continuously so if you see my pictures uh, from my desktop you'll always see that there is mathematica file open in one uh, screen and then i'm writing a paper on the other screen and doing some calculations uh, by hand or reading some paper so that is what a theoretical physicist do theoretical physicist in general needs quite a lot of mathematics 
So all the physical models that you come across has mathematics in it. So you need to understand the mathematics behind your model to do any calculation. Nowadays, lot of calculation, as I mentioned, are done using Mathematica or in numerics, but you still have to understand the mathematics behind it so that you can program your uh, Mathematica accordingly. So you have to understand the mathematics of model. And that takes a lot of time because People use different different conventions and I will talk about conventions some other day but conventions are so much pain uh, because different groups use different different conventions and it's possible that you come across two uh, papers both done in two different groups and as a PhD student you don't understand that they belong to two different groups and they have used two different conventions and first weeks you will be confused why you are not getting the same result because you're using one equation from one paper and one equation from other paper both have used different conventions and what you're getting is something messy so you have to go and check the conventions first so this is something that i learned during my phd that i first thing i need to check before picking up any questions from any paper is check their conventions what conventions they are using uh, there are conventions in every step so you need to be consistent with your conventions so these are few little tips and tricks that i have understood or learned during my phd uh, that you learn just by experience but i thought i should tell i always tell my juniors please be consistent with your uh, conventions <laughs> so that it doesn't take a lot of your time it doesn't waste a lot of your time so yeah that is what i do as a theoretical physicist if you want to know a little more about my research please go check out my website i have added a new section in my website uh, it's called talks slash presentation where i have added the presentations that i have given um in the past so recent presentation that i gave uh, was my first conference in cosmology where i talked about string theory to cosmology the status quo it's a review talk and it uh, i just talked about how you can use some string theory model to, to write an inflation model in cosmology and the motivation behind it so the talk covers all of it so if you want to read about it please go check out my presentations uh, yeah and i have also added uh four lectures for general relativity in that talk slash presentation so you please do do check out it's a handwritten road with some cuts of some paper books that i have used so go check out the gr note and if you have any other questions please put it down in the comment section below i will see you in my next video till then bye bye i hope this helps see you bye 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 Thank you.